Greetings and salutations. As you watch this video, you will be learning about the Renaissance. At the conclusion of this presentation, you should be able to tell me where the Renaissance began, describe the concept of the Renaissance man, and give examples past and present that would qualify as Renaissance men. The Renaissance was a time of intellectual enlightenment that occurred after the Dark Ages. The word Renaissance literally means rebirth. The Renaissance began in Italy around 1350 AD, and the Renaissance had three defining characteristics. First, Renaissance Italy was largely an urban society. As powerful city-states developed in Italy, these city-states began to rival the church for control over the fairs of Italy proper. This led to Italy becoming a more secular state, focusing less on religion and more on developing a worldly view. Second, the Renaissance was a period of recovery from the Dark Ages. It was at this time that culture and politics started to correct itself after the fall of Rome. Third, the development of the idea of the Renaissance man became highly popular. There grew a high regard for what man could achieve by himself, and greatness in a single area was no longer strived for. Nobody represented this idea better than Leonardo da Vinci, who became not only a successful painter, but also an inventor, mathematician, sculptor, and architect. Despite the Renaissance being a period of rebirth, it did not affect everyone. Mostly, these intellectual pursuits were reserved for the wealthy. Because of the papal states and the popes serving as the authority over Italy during the Dark Ages, Italy failed to develop into a monarchy. This led to the development of three powerful city-states during the Renaissance. These city-states were Milan, Venice, and Florence. Milan was located in northern Italy and served as a major trade route. Milan was ruled by the Visconti family and later Francisco Sforza. Both rulers were able to generate massive amounts of wealth through efficient taxation. Venice was another northern Italian city-state and served as the gateway from the west into Asia, a massive trade city that showcased goods from all over the world. In Venice, the real power was held by the merchants. Florence was more centrally located and was ruled behind the scenes by the powerful Medici family, Cosimo and later Lorenzo. The Medicis were so powerful that Lorenzo was able to make his son Pope despite the fact that his son had kids of his own. The Renaissance also saw big changes in the arts. One of those changes was that humans became the focus of attention in paintings. Another change that took place during the Renaissance was the creation of the painting style called fresco. Frescoes were paintings done in fresh, wet plaster with water-based paints, and it would become the style that was most often used with Renaissance painters. Speaking of Renaissance painters, we will be spending the remaining time during this presentation looking at a couple of the most important. We'll begin by talking about Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci was a true Renaissance man. He is well known as a painter and inventor, but he did other things as well. This is one of da Vinci's paintings, The Last Supper, which depicts Jesus at the Last Supper with the Apostles. This is perhaps the most famous painting ever painted, the Mona Lisa, and it too was done by Leonardo da Vinci. This is the Vitruvian Man, also by da Vinci, and it's not actually a piece of artwork at all. It is da Vinci's take on an anatomical drawing of the human body, depicting the range of motion, and it's an image that we have broadcast into space in case there's any intelligent life out there to show them how people look. This is another image from da Vinci's notebook. 
And this is a picture of an early helicopter. The only reason that da Vinci couldn't achieve lift with this invention was that he couldn't make the rotor spin fast enough. He'd have to wait until the Industrial Revolution to find a way to propel his helicopter into the sky. Michelangelo is perhaps the second most famous Renaissance artist. Michelangelo was an Italian Renaissance painter, sculptor, architect, and poet. And most interesting about Michelangelo is that the three things that he is most well known for were in entirely different mediums. This is the creation of Adam, and it's actually just one piece of a much larger painting that Michelangelo did on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. This is the statue of David. Michelangelo sculpted it out of marble, and it depicts the biblical character David, who's most famous for killing Goliath. This is St. Peter's Basilica. It's a church that Michelangelo designed, and it showcased his ability as an architect. Raphael was another famous Italian painter and architect, and he's celebrated for his paintings and drawings. This piece is simply known as cherubs, and it depicts two child-looking angels kind of staring off into the distance. This is another painting by Raphael, and it's called The Miraculous Drought of Fishes. If you look into the corner, you can actually see Jesus sitting on the boat, and the fishermen are actually praying to him. And this is a depiction of St. Catherine of Alexandria that Raphael painted. And finally, we have Donatello. Donatello was another famous Italian painter and sculptor, although he was not held in as such high regard as the others. This is the tomb of anti-pope John XXIII that Donatello designed as an architect. This is a statue of St. George, who was known for slaying dragons, that Donatello sculpted from stone. And this is another statue that Donatello sculpted, simply called Habakkuk. Now it's time to check for understanding. At this point, you should be able to tell me, where did the Renaissance begin? You should also be able to describe the idea of the Renaissance man and give me two examples of people who lived during the Renaissance that embodied or represented this ideal. Additionally, you should be able to give me two modern examples of people who could qualify as Renaissance men.